Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me again today. So I am actually remaking a recipe that I've already made once previously, like when I very first started, which was not that long ago, but still I've definitely um, improved my skill set since then. So I wanted to redo this video because the sound quality on the last one was just a little bit weird and it was just very off. And so today I made a birria de res again and queso birria tacos. And so that is what the recipe that I'm going to be showing you guys today. Um, I am going to be following the exact same recipe that I used in the last video, but there is just going to be a little bit better instructions and then also just a little bit um, better sound quality and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I made these tacos and let's get this recipe going. Um, if you guys like to see easy, simple recipes like this, don't forget to subscribe right away. Um, I do upload four times a week and I always share really simple recipes, although this is not one of my simpler recipes. This is actually a little bit more advanced, but it's something that, you know, as long as you follow the directions, you can definitely accomplish this. So this is how we made these beautiful, wonderful tacos. Alrighty guys, so for this recipe, I'm going to be using chuck roast, two cross-cut beef shanks, beef short ribs, 10 wahia chili pods, 10 New Mexico chili pods, 3 pasilla chili pods, and 6 chili de arbol, 3 chipotle peppers with 3 tablespoons of adobo sauce, 6 whole cloves, 8 bay leaves, a 1.5 piece of cinnamon stick, 2 teaspoons of black peppercorns, 2 tablespoons of beef bouillon, 1 tablespoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of whole cumin, dried thyme, and oregano, one whole garlic bulb, two white onions, four large carrots, a one inch piece of ginger root, five Roma tomatoes, a third of a cup of white vinegar, one bunch of cilantro, Monterey Jack cheese, and corn tortillas. All right, you guys, so we are going to begin by seasoning and searing all of our meat. It's really important when searing meat that you allow it to come to room temperature, so try to let it sit out for at least an hour before you begin the searing process. It might seem like I'm adding a lot of salt here, but this is the best opportunity to season the meat itself, so you want to be very liberal with your salt. Also, this is a kosher salt, so it's not as salty as iodized or table salt. If you've never used kosher salt before, you should definitely give it a try. And I'm just going to go ahead and get my chuck roast started. So I'm going to cut it into four pieces. I really like to hand shred my meat and so this just makes that a little bit easier and it makes it a little bit easier to fit inside of our pot. And then again, I am going to generously season with salt and pepper. For the shank, I just want to get it out and clean it off and then I'm going to pat it dry with paper towels. This is a really important step when you're searing meat. If there is any extra moisture on your meat, it will not sear properly and it will create like water in the bottom of your pan and nothing will cook correctly. And then in a medium high pan, almost to the point of smoking, you want to start adding in the meat. Season side down. Be sure that you don't overcrowd your pan. It's best if the pieces are not touching. And then you do want to go ahead and season the other side. Allow the meat to sit for a good three to five minutes before attempting to move it. If the meat does not move easily and feels stuck, then it's not ready. It should have a nice brown crust on the outside and look just like this. This is a very long process, but I promise it will be worth it in the end. And you wanna be sure that you sear all sides of the meat, so flip it up onto the sides as well. All right, and so while that meat is searing, I am just gonna start working on my chilies. You wanna go ahead and remove all of the seeds and the ribs from the chilies. So I'm just tearing the stem off the top and dumping the seeds out. They should fall out pretty easily. You can just kinda of stick your finger in there to open it up and then pull that little rib piece out of the middle as well. This can create sort of a bitterness, so you wanna make sure that you get that out of there. If you're sensitive to chilies, you definitely want to use gloves to do this and really try to avoid touching your face, your eyes in particular. Dried chilies are a great thing to keep on hand because you can just make so many different recipes with these. 
but depending on where you live, they can be hard to find. Sometimes I have a hard time finding the New Mexico chilies. If this happens to you, just use 20 guajilla peppers. Those are pretty common and seem to be a lot easier to find. After you have removed all of the seeds, you want to wash your chilies. I just put them in a pot and rinse them a few times and then add enough water to cover the chilies and don't forget to throw in your chili de arbols. And then you just want to put them on the stove on a high heat and let them come to a boil and then turn them off and let them sit in hot water for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they have softened. You can see they're already starting to get a little bit soft there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start peeling my carrots now. Not a lot of recipes I saw used carrots, but I really like the flavor they add to the stew. So I'm just gonna trim off the ends and cut them into small pieces. And then I'm also going to go ahead and peel my ginger while I have my peeler out. This might seem like an odd ingredient, but trust me, you won't be able to taste it in the finished product. All right, so I've already started adding my meat into my pot. A large soup pot or stock pot is ideal for this recipe. You can see the meat already looks great and is nice and juicy. So I'm just adding in all of my carrots, one whole white onion. I'm gonna use about eight cloves of garlic. You don't have to worry about peeling these. This is, they'll work out just fine for you. I'm adding in my two tablespoons of beef bouillon about half of my peppercorns, which is gonna be about a teaspoon, four to five bay leaves, and then my entire tablespoon of kosher salt. And the rest of the meat is ready to go in as well. You can see there is a really nice sear on the outside of that. All right, and then I'm going to add two cups of water to my pan we were using to sear the meat. And you just wanna get in there and kind of scrape the stuff that's on the bottom of the pan. This is a process called deglazing, and it is going to pick up all of the flavor in the pan and add more depth to our consomme. So go ahead and add that into the pot, as well as enough water to cover everything in the pot. I used about 10 cups of water, but use however much you need. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that on our stove and turn it to high. As it heats up, there may be a film forming on the top, just go ahead and skim that off as much as you can before it begins to boil. And once it starts to bubble, and before it is boiling completely out of control, turn it down to a medium high. It should look something like this, and you're gonna let this go for one hour before we move on to our next step. Okay, so you can see the chilies are nice and soft now and have cooled down. You wanna go ahead and drain out the water and add them into your blender cup. Throw in the whole piece of ginger your remaining peppercorns, the other five cloves of garlic, make sure you peel these ones, the one and a half inch piece of cinnamon stick, all of our remaining bay leaves, so three to four bay leaves, and the six whole cloves, our thyme, oregano, and cumin seeds, three chipotles with three tablespoons of adobo sauce, and then I'm just going to add in about a cup of the beef broth to the blender as well as the one-third cup of vinegar, which I did not get on camera. Then we're just going to blend this up. If it's giving you any problems, you can always add in more liquid and then go ahead and add the mixture into the pot and add some water into the blender to get all of the chili from the blender. You can keep adding water as this cooks. The meat is submerged into the liquid. You wanna go ahead and bring it back up to a boil and then turn it back down to medium high and let it simmer for two and a half to three hours. In the same pot that we boiled our chilies in, go ahead and add in your Roma tomatoes and then just cook these on high until the skin starts to peel off of the tomatoes. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like after about three hours. And yes, if you cook this on your stovetop, you're going to have a big red mess on your hands, but it's just, it's so worth it and it's really not that hard to clean up. Um, go ahead and pull out a piece of your chuck roast and test it with your knife. You can see the meat is very tender and pulling apart easily. This is exactly how you want it to look. So at this point, we're gonna remove all of the meat from the pot and set it aside to cool down just a bit. 
You can see the shanks have completely fallen apart and the bones have come out. Now I'm going to take out all of the carrots and set these aside as well in case anyone wants to eat those with our stew. Vidya is traditionally served as a stew and so these carrots actually add really great flavor and texture if you're gonna if you're going to serve your video that way and then i'm using the same pot i boiled the chilies and tomatoes in and i'm just going to strain our broth so we can have a nice smooth consomme all of the flavors are now in the juice so you just want to work this through your strainer this can be kind of a tedious process but just be patient with it it does take a little bit of time, but all of that fibrous material that you can see in my strainer, you do not want that to be in your consomme. After you've gotten all of the liquid out, it should look something like this. So just a nice dry, um, just all the remains of everything, the seeds and the skins and the pieces of ginger and stuff are all going to be in there. After the tomatoes have cooled down, add them into your blender. You shouldn't need to add any water, but if you need to, you can. And then you're just going to go ahead and run these through the strainer as well and just squeeze out as much of that juice as you can get. All right, and then just go ahead and mix that together. Put this on a medium low heat and just let this simmer for about 45 minutes. You can see it looks nice and smooth and delicious. And this will thicken up as it cooks a little bit longer. And then in the meantime, you can start shredding your meat. I like to do this by hand and remove as much of the fat as I can. You can see it pulls off really, really easily for you. It's, it's easy to do, but it can be a very time consuming process. So if you want, you can just chop up the meat and completely skip this step if you don't mind having a little bit of fat in the meat, but personally, I like to take it all out. You can just see how juicy and delicious the meat looks. It turned out absolutely perfect. So this is a piece of the chuck roast. This is where the really chewy and unpleasant fat is going to be. So if you are going to chop this up, I would definitely at least try to get some of this fat off of this part of your meat. You can see how easily it just pulls right off of there. So it's super easy to work with. Um, this is a piece of our shank. You can see the bone is just pulling right out. And then the meat again is just falling right apart. The fat on the shank is a little bit different than the fat inside of the chuck. And so that's actually a pretty tasty, tasty fat there. So if you do like the fat, I would leave that in for sure. The shank meat is very flavorful and delicious and the ribs as well. The bone just pulled right out for me. This meat is very juicy and is probably the best tasting of the three, but the combination works out really great in this recipe. You can see how tender that is. It's just coming right apart for me. It looks amazing. So I went ahead and skimmed the dark oil off of the top of the consomme and then I put it back into my, my larger pot and I'm just going to go ahead and add in all of the shredded beef back into the pot with the consomme and we're going to let this cook for about 30 minutes on a medium low heat and this is just going to bring the whole thing together. At this point, your birria is done. So if you wanted to eat this as a stew, you can go ahead and start serving it. I'm just going to go ahead and get my onions chopped up, so I am going to cut them into thin strips and then a nice small dice. I'm just going to put those in a bowl. And then next we're going to work on our cilantro. You just want to cut the ends off of that and chop that up. Add it into your onions and just toss it to combine. All right, and then the moment we have all been waiting for, we are going to make some quesadilla tacos. I like to dip my tortilla in hot vegetable oil for just a few seconds before dipping it into the consomme. This will keep the tortilla from getting soggy and falling apart on you. It will also help the tortilla to get a little bit crunchy on the outside. So I'm just going to do three tacos at a time in my pan here. You can see I'm just dipping it in the oil, dipping it in the consomme, and then adding it into the pan. You want to go ahead and let these tortillas cook on this first side for about a minute before turning them over. You can see I got a nice crunchiness on the inside of our tortilla now. And I'm doing this on a medium heat, medium to medium low, maybe just, just below medium. And then you want to add in your cheese. 
put a generous amount in here, as much cheese as you want. I'm using a Monterey Jack today, but any melting cheese will do. Really any cheese you want, any cheese that has a good uh, melting type of a texture. And then you just want to load these babies up with as much meat as you can fit inside of them. You can see they look amazing already. And then I'm just going to top them with some onions and some cilantro. And then you want to carefully fold the tacos over. Let them cook for about a minute on this first side before flipping them. And at this point you could add a ladle of consomme into the pan if you wanted to. And then I'm just flipping them over. You can see I got some really good color and a really good crunch on that one side. So these tacos are going to stay together really nice. And look at how beautiful they are. They are so delicious. You can see some of the cheese has kind of gotten hard and crunchy there. And it's just oozing out and they look absolutely perfect. They look cheesy, juicy, and absolutely delicious. And there they are all plated up. We are almost ready to eat your beautiful quesadilla tacos and consomme. All right, and you guys can see that was a really, really um, kind of an intricate recipe. There was a lot of ingredients. There was a lot going on. There was a lot of different cooking processes and things like that. And so it's definitely not um, one of the easiest recipes that are out there, but it's so worth it. It takes quite a while. Um, you can tell that it made my kitchen really messy and stuff like that, but it definitely was worth it because these tacos are really, really tasty. And what goes better with tacos than a nice, cold, delicious red beer? Yummy. All right, I'm so excited. This seriously took <clears throat> all day to make these, and I am just ready to get going. So um, the first thing you want to do is, this is my consomme here. So you can see I just have my tacos. I use some Monterey Jack and mozzarella cheese in there, so they're super cheesy and delicious. Let me see if I can focus. There we go. And then the consomme is here with the onions and the cilantro in there. So I'm going to take my lime and squeeze it. I'm so excited. These tacos are so, so good. You can see they're super steamy and hot. See how yummy they look on the inside. You guys, I um, I wouldn't skip the step where you add the um, vegetable oil because that will help to keep them ho to hold them together since they are wet tacos. They do fall apart pretty easily. Mmm. Got my stack of napkins. This is a really messy meal. Totally worth it. You just gotta go for it. You can't even worry about making a mess or anything because it's just gonna happen. So you want to get a nice dip in the consomme. This is my happy taco dance, you guys. Oh my god. Mm. They're incredible. They're so good with this beer. Mm. Red beer, tacos, any Mexican food. A definite home run of there. This one's really falling apart. I'm gonna take my glasses off. They're so tasty. Absolutely perfectly balanced, perfect harmony of different ingredients. I've made this recipe a bunch of times, and I can tell you that this, it has been perfected. For sure. So good. So worth it. These tacos took me about seven hours to make, so very much worth it. Mm. 
We're so perfect. <clears throat> Going in for the dip. So good. So, so good. So I had a couple people question me about using carrots in my media. And I just want to tell you guys real quick, the reason I do that is because um, the very first recipe that I made, it just, it, I was, oh man, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed in it because you know, we were seeing these tacos online and they looked so good and they just, and they, they looked great they turned out looking fantastic just like these ones do but when I tasted them they just didn't taste complete and so I just couldn't kind of like put my finger on what it was that was kind of throwing me off about them and then I, f I realized it was like it was and not that they need to be sweet but they were kind of missing a little bit of like a sweetness to kind of balance them out and so I added the carrots that's how the carrots got in the media, and uh, it actually works out really, really well. So, and not get enough consomme on the taco. Hmm. It's literally just the most perfect com um, <clears throat> combination ever. So good. Insane. These might be the best tacos I've ever made in my whole life, honestly. You know when you're cooking, you're cooking and like you're making something and you just really want to perfect it, every single time that you make it, it's going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. So... If um, it doesn't work out the first time, just try it again. Try it again, tweak it, change things around a little bit maybe. Look at that one, that one got some really good color on it. You guys can see it's got the, the burnt cheese part right here. That's the money part. Give it a nice big dip. You know, these tacos, they're not too spicy. If you guys want them to be a little bit spicier, throw in a few more chili de arbol or add more chipotle peppers. It's another thing that's not a sort of a standard ingredient in birria, but I like the smokiness that it brings and a little bit of spiciness, so they actually work out really, really well. Oh okay. god. My tacos are almost gone. My beer is almost gone, which means that it is time for me to go. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Share the video with your friends. They're not going to be disappointed. This is a fantastic recipe. I think you guys are going to love it. And you guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great night. Much love to you.